Beryl and I were watching a, a movie from Bollywood, and uh, they had this very fast tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a, it's a 16th note uh, music going on. And I just went upstairs after it was over and I started fooling around with rapidly moving 16ths. The most important idea of the piece was that, okay, 16ths now, but instead of having a slow movement, let's, let's go to ace, so it'll get slower by changing note values rather than changing tempo. And then go to quarters, and then go back to ace, and then to sixteenths. First of all, I'm very fond of arch forms. This goes back to when I was a student at Julia listening to Bartok fourth and fifth quartet. So the idea of going back to a, a, a longer form, because you've got more movements to deal with, was attractive. And the fact that you don't change tempo, quarter equals 100, boom, finished. And it was in four harmonic sections. Each movement is divided into four. I have a habit harmonically of going from, uh, let's just say, two sharps to one flat, D to F to A flat, B natural, and back to D. So you have a kind of you know, a change of keys that leads you back to where you began. And then uh, you're just making very simple rhythmic changes that everybody's used to doing. The, the timekeeper is a piano, or two pianos, and they kind of trade off the timekeeping duties. The, the 16th note pulse is a simple hand alternation, but the notes are changing. So it's a, it's a harmonic feel or bass uh, for the piece. And that same combination of harmonies is repeated in the eighth note section, but now the whole feeling of ba da bi da da is smoother. It's, uh, it's not only slower because it's now eighth notes, but it feels differently. Uh, and by the time you get to the middle movement, it's not just quarters, it's actually the Ghanaian bell pattern, which is dum 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 And that, uh, what I found out with that as a bass is that basically all the melodic notes had to coincide with the rhythmic attacks of the pattern, which is not, you know, in 16th you can't lose. And in the eighth is pretty much the same thing. But in that, in that pattern, you kind of determine where the notes of the melody would fall if it was going to work. And uh, so that was, a, I didn't expect that. And uh, I found, oh, so that forced me to do things which actually throw the melody a little bit off kilter in a kind of nice way. And then it goes back to the eighth, and it goes back to the sixteenth. And when it went back to the sixteenth, I figured, well, you know, I'll go back to the first movement, sort of figure out how I can vary that. When I got to the last section of that, all of a sudden I began to hear just repeated single notes only. Instead of like music for eighteen, it was I don't know why. But I thought, well, that's interesting, I want to try that. And so it was basically flutes and clarinets doing that, and vibes and pianos, and everybody else laid, laid out. And it's very quiet, and it just goes and, and fades out, which is totally unexpected. Now, in athletic terms, <laughs> if you were to do that, it, it sounds like a kind of a plan for pacing a runner. I'm not a, I'm not a runner. I, I, I work out on, on a bicycle and a treadmill. Uh, but. Um, I have uh, musician friends who are runners, and I would think, you know, I, I, again, this is just me thinking, uh, that you want to pace yourself. And you start strong, and then you kind of have to ease up some way, shape, or form, and then gradually you go back and sprint to the end. That may be entirely wrong, but that's was my thought. So most of my titles are like, you know, six pianos, four marimbas, double sextet. <laughs> uh, but this seemed, so I, for, I sort of resisted it for a while, but it, it stuck. It said, look, I'm a runner, you know, go with it. And it really worked. I mean, it really worked. In, it was everybody really. It, it was very successful. <laughs>